Well, my little Smurfs, we finally have a movie that's better than the Garfield movie. Yeah, you just had to do two chipmunk ripoffs to make it. Hey, that's right. Get him! Oh. Hey, everybody. I just got back from Smurfs and the Lost Village, a.k.a. the Smurfette movie. I don't know if you've heard about that, but this is the Smurfette movie. So if you're a Smurfette fan, you need to get over to Smurfs and the Lost Village. And I keep wanting to say Smurfs and the Haunted Village, so be aware I might say that at some point through this review. Um, I think Haunted Village was like an episode of the Ewoks uh, animated TV series. I, that's the only thing I can think of. Uh, but anyway, Smurfs and the Lost Village. Um, this was actually a pretty good movie, um, but it's, it's targeted at kids, um, modern kids with desires for modern pop music and things like that. But, um, as a, as a fan in the sense that I grew up, or at least when I was small, I watched the Smurfs on Saturday mornings, um. And I swear, that thing was on like a four-hour block every Saturday morning. Maybe it was just one hour. I know it was more than half an hour. and uh, But I watched it pretty loyally for many years. But that might be an exaggeration because I know I stopped at some point and it continued to roll on. And I think I stopped before they were bringing on other characters like other female characters and children, Smurfs. I... I don't know much about that period, and if they would put the stinking show on DVD in its entirety, I might, you know, go back and revisit it. I actually have season one, but I haven't watched it yet. Uh, if, if I had the whole show, I'd probably get started watching it, but I actually haven't seen it really sat and watched it since, since I was a little kid. Um, even though they re-ran it, I think, on Cartoon Network or somewhere. Uh, I don't know if it was Disney Channel. Somebody was rerunning it for quite a while, too. I think it was Cartoon Network. And, um, yeah, so this is their third big screen movie of recent years. They did have a movie back in, like, I'm going to say the 70s that was made in Europe. And it was very, I'm going to say it was very European, whatever that means. <laughs> and uh, it's kind of not a super interesting or super good movie. And the Smurfs only come in like way late in the movie. And it is on DVD here in America, but it doesn't have the American voice cast. It has the English dub, the original version. I, I don't know. I think it's in French or, or Belgian or what. I don't remember if the Smurfs originated in France or Belgium or somewhere else that I'm forgetting because I mean I've read it a million times I just don't remember uh, they originally were a comic strip or a comic book um, by an artist called uh, Peyo I believe and uh, yeah um, but for me it was a Saturday morning cartoon and uh, and I enjoyed it quite a bit and I have strong nostalgia for it even though this uh, mushroom house is pretty much the only uh, and and a few figures are the only things I have of the Smurfs. Uh, but I am going to talk about some a few items from this new movie in a minute. Uh, but I have to say, see this mushroom house? That's a reasonable size fantasy mushroom house. But uh, Smurfs are supposed to be three apples high. Now, I don't know if apples are smaller in Europe. But, and I've, you know, I've been to England, but I, I never really ate an apple while I was there. But... Apples aren't super small here in America, and three apples, to me, three apples is like, at least, that's that's bigger than a Smurf. Uh, I don't, I, I think there's something really wrong with the whole system of sizing the Smurfs, because think about how huge those mushroom houses would have to be for three apple high Smurf. I don't know, but uh, that would be weird. If I stumbled upon these giant mushroom houses... I'd know something was up. But anyway, uh, as for the movies, um, like I said, the first one, which is Smurfs and the Magic Flute from back in the 70s, not a fantastic movie. You can find it in $5 bins at Best Buy. I still need to pick it up. 
the minute I pick it up, it'll be on Blu-ray. <laughs> and you might think, why would such a bad movie come out on Blu-ray? Well, it came out on Blu-ray in Europe. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I, I should pick it up. I've seen it for less than $5 on DVD. But I remember trying to watch it as a kid because I liked the show. And the movie just... It, it was nothing like the show because it wasn't made by the same people. I mean, the characters looked the same because they've always looked very much like they do in the comics. But yeah, it wasn't the same. It wasn't the American Smurfs. Um, but yeah, when I was a kid, it was a very popular show. I mean, they had so many copycats. They, the one everybody brings up is the Snorks. But they had a show about little puppies that were extra small little puppies in medieval outfits and it was I guess a Robin Hood outfits and it was like medieval times and they were called the biscuits look that up and then, <laughs> then there were um there were many others there were the Manchi cheese which were little monkeys and it was all about small and cute the same way that they made Muppet babies and then all of a sudden there was baby everything you know well the Smurfs was a big hit so for quite a while they made a lot of medieval small creature thing cartoons um technically the gummy bears was kind of yeah i mean it was medieval fantasy creatures they were smaller i mean they weren't size of average bears they were small bears they were like you know teddy bear size maybe well a little bigger than that but um i guess they were bigger than that <laughs> but, but they were still small for bears and uh yeah i mean it, it was kind of you know, taking some of the Smurf stuff. I mean, if they set a show in medieval times about, like, magical, uh, secret creatures, it's a Smurf's ripoff. Small, secret creatures that do magic and stuff. Anyway, but, but you know, Gummy Bears, that was my... Of all those shows, that was my show. I mean, any any of those Disney shows back in the day, I used to watch Gummy Bears on Saturday mornings. That was before it was part of the Disney afternoon. Because it was kind of, it was like the second Disney animated show they put on in the 80s. The first one was actually The Wuzzles. Look that up. That was a good show. That was a short-lived good show that could all fit on one disc. <laughs> or two discs, maybe. I don't know. It was like 13 episodes. That should be put out on DVD. But anyway, where was I? Um, <laughs> but this movie, Smurfs. And the Lost Village, which I do have some toys I'm going to talk about a little bit. Uh, I went to Toys R Us after the movie because I liked the movie. And, you know, I watched two reviews before I went to see this movie. Um, one of them was from a longtime Smurfs fan. It was uh, the Black Nerd. And uh, that's what he calls himself. It's, I believe his name is Andre, though. Uh, and uh, he he's a big Smurfs fan. And I think we come from a similar place of having grown up watching the show but uh the other one is the cinema snob i watched his review and he and his partner uh, the person that he went to see it with he has a whole team and i i i don't remember which one he saw the movie with but they hated it so i went in thinking okay well i think i tend to to have more in common with black nerd as far as like uh, uh you know be more open to the younger set stuff and liking it, you know, more often than the snob does. Uh, so I gave it a shot. Uh, it was just, you know, I felt like going to see a movie today because I didn't really have plans to. Uh, the first two I did not see in theaters. Uh, when I say the first two, because I keep forgetting to talk about this, there were the two movies that came out in the past, I, I don't know how many years <laughs> Is it the past 10 years? Is that even accurate? It, during these 2000s, you know, um, they made two movies and they were in the same continuity and they involved the Smurfs going to New York in modern times with Neil Patrick Harris and the actress that played his wife, who I've always kind of had a thing for, but right now I'm drawing a blank on her name. And, um, and, and, uh, Gargamel was played by, uh, Oh, Hank Azaria, and he was fantastic as Gargamel. Gargamel being the villain of the uh, of the whole Smurf universe. He's a, a wizard, an evil wizard who's always trying to catch the Smurfs. I don't know the logic of making this toy the same size as this toy, but yeah, this is Gargamel. He has a cat that is a highlight of the show because his cat is named Azrael, and he's really funny. Anyway, um. 
and Azrael is still voiced by Frank Welker, who also still voices Fred Jones ever since Scooby Doo started. Amazing. Um, but yeah, uh, Hank Azaria, I liked him as Gargamel more than the Gargamel in this new movie, which is not in the continuity, for, as far as I could tell, of the other two Smurf movies. Uh, big screen, big budget, live action Smurf movies. This one is all CGI, animated movie, and it's really true to the old show for the most part. There's, there's of course, like with the Peanuts movie, you have some modern music in there. Some pop music. I don't love that. I really, I didn't, I loved the Peanuts movie, but that's something I didn't like about the Peanuts movie was that modern pop music. It didn't fit with the tone to me. It was okay. I could suffer through it, but it, to me, it didn't fit with the tone. Um, with this movie, it wasn't as, as big of a problem because the whole movie was very much candy for the younger set. Although it, it like I say, it was true enough to the old show to be good for nostalgic, you know, reasons. If you're going to watch this for nostalgia, uh, then um, I think I think you'll you'll enjoy it. It's it's not like full of adult humor. I'm not used to having long hair yet. Sorry guys, I have to grow this out for my cosplay. Anyway, um, it's um it's not loaded with adult humor. It has a few little things here and there, but for the most part, it's for not just kids, but it's for small kids. But it's not babyish. It's still, I was still able to just enjoy it, you know. It's just a simple story. Uh, the Smurfs go to find this lost village because they want to warn these. It's a lost village of Smurfs. It's not a secret. It's in the trailers. It's a lost village of all girl Smurfs. And uh, Smurfette is still trying to find her purpose. Other than just being a girl, that's not a, you know. That, that shouldn't be what de defines her, and that's the whole point of the movie. She's trying to find out, you know, who she is and what she does, because all the Smurfs are named after whatever they do, and uh, she's trying to figure out her story. So she's, um, and there's a lot of drama about the fact that she was not a real Smurf, because Gargamel created her, and I am really love that, that's one thing I love about all the Smurf stuff that has come out, even recently, they haven't forgotten the fact that Smurfette was created by Gargamel, and they make it usually a part of the stories to some degree. And that's pretty cool that they do that. Even though the last two movies, I think, were very misguided in the idea of bringing it to modern day and all that. That's screwy. That is a screwy idea. Um, and I, I, I swear, that was just like, oh, the chipmunks were popular. What else is small that we can put in a live-action person's house to mess up their house? <laughs> or apartment or whatever. Oh, well, Smurfs. I don't know. <laughs> but um, this movie is more like watching the old show. It's like a long episode of the old show, and some people say, well, that's the problem with it. Well, not really, because this one is visually gorgeous. All the, all the animation, all the designs, it's really beautiful to look at. And that sort of fills in, you know, the issues of like, yeah, it's, it's targeted at kids, like a lot of movies, but it's really beautiful to look at too. So it, you know, it's a balance there and I, I enjoyed it. Um, I'm capable of enjoying some really kiddie stuff, but um, yeah, if, if you too, you know if you are also capable of watching kids movies and enjoying them, and if you are, then, uh, and if you have nostalgia for the Smurfs in any way, then I think you, you'll enjoy this one. This is not a snooze fest like, uh, what was it? The Smurfs and the Magic Flute. <laughs> but, um, but it's very simple. It's, it's, um, if you love Smurfette, it's all about her. It's about her, you know, existential issues, and it's about, Gargamel and and there's some interesting interaction between her and Gargamel uh, and Gargamel is, is the same as ever although I'm I'm not totally sold on the guy who's doing the voice he's from the office um, Rain Wilson and I've seen him in stuff where I, I thought he was good I liked the movie the rocker I think that was him in that one it's been a while since I saw that <laughs> I haven't really watched the office yet um, but yeah uh, he plays Gargamel here but you kind of are watching it and wishing Frank Hank Azaria had, had been brought in to do it. But, I mean, he wasn't, you know, unacceptable. It's just, 
I don't know. He, he could have been more Gargamelly, but he was doing his own thing with it, I guess. But uh, overall, it was a good movie. The Smurfs were really good. They were all very... They reminded me of how they, you know, always were. Uh, some of the original voices of the Smurfs I didn't love too much. So, in truth, I, I kind of was fine with these. It was like Demi Lovato this time as Smurfette. And uh, Mandy Patinkin, I believe, was uh, Papa Smurf this time. And, uh, you know, that was cool. And, and then, you know, Brainy and uh, Hefty and uh, Clumsy Smurf. That was the main group in this movie. But you did see, you know, some of the others. I think Jokey was there. Grouchy was there. I mean, but they all had, like, little small parts. There were some some that were pretty funny, you know. There was, well, there was one that's, like, Nosy Smurf. Um, other people have commented on Nosy Smurf. He's, he's pretty funny in this. He's just barely comes in now and then, but he's, he's pretty funny. Um, uh, you know, it was, it was a good movie. The, the, the art was the real star of it because it was really beautiful. Kids, I think, will be highly entertained. Um, little, little kids. Um, uh, besides little, little kids, it's for people who are very nostalgic about the Smurfs. So anyway, um, I, I enjoyed it. I had a good, good time. Good morning movie. You know, it was, a I, I went to see it at like noon. Uh, and it was a good movie for going to see at noon, you know. And uh, I went to the draft house, you know, got dinner and lunch. So it was pretty good. It was pretty cool. And uh, then I, I went by to Toys R Us just to see what they had. Um, and they have figures. They have figures and they have little uh, bean plushes, which uh, I wouldn't mind getting because they're actually, they seem accurate size. And I'm kind of like away from getting plushes very often anymore But when they're like actual size and it's actually like having the character I mean, I always start to think if I ever did a cosplay of Gargamel having one of these Smurfs <laughs> That would be perfect. So I might at some point try to get one of those or or you know a set of them I don't know but uh, For now it was the figures I was looking at because I can stick them in that mushroom there and, or set them up around the mushroom. And so here are the figures that they have. And you'll notice, looking at these, these are in two packs. And uh, it, I think the two packs are like work like that. And uh, these are $5.99. And they have a pack of like five or so I don't know how many and then they have the mystery packs now the thing about the mystery packs I never buy these but I was you know comparing and everything and these are like I think $3.99 the thing about these is this is the only way to get brainy smurf and the two pack is the only way to get papa smurf and uh, the new female leader who is basically the mama smurf and she's her name is uh is a smurf willow because they do their names differently the village of girl smurfs which by the way was a cool thing the village of girl smurfs they had some really cool girl smurfs and uh yeah and um and incidentally you know because i i got sidetracked with the toys <laughs> the way they resolve everything some of it if there's an issue with a movie that and this has been brought up by other other people like the way they resolve the whole Smurfette thing not her issues because that was great but the way they resolve her um well it's a spoiler let's just say that at the end of the movie something bad happens to Smurfette and then the way this is fixed is a little bit like I don't know Care Bear stare <laughs> I don't know it's a spoiler type thing but I don't want to get too far into it that part was a little bit like eh, that was kind of eh. <laughs> I don't know it's, it was it was like a, the kiss of Prince Charming I don't know but it wasn't <laughs> hefty Smurf hefty Smurf is the other one I was gonna talk about hefty Smurf is in the two packs and he's in the mystery packs but he's not in the multi pack and I don't think Smurf Storm, who is sort of who the um, she's I think she's the Michelle Rodriguez Smurf. I I don't think she's in the uh, multi pack either, 
So, you know, you got to look at the backs of the packages and figure out the best way to try to get all of them. But basically, you might as well start with these because it's the only way to get brainy. So I'm going to open these, show you what I've got here. Like I said, this two pack is the only way that you can get Papa Smurf and Smurf Willow. This is Smurf Willow. This is Julia Roberts, and she's the female Papa Smurf. She's the Mama Smurf of the uh, Girl Smurf Village. And she was a cool character. And there's Papa. I already have a Papa, but these are actually posable. Their arms anyway, just their arms and probably their head, yeah. The, uh, if I was to compare, this is the classic Smurf figure. Uh, these are made by uh, a German company. I forget what it's called, and it's very hard to read back here, but Schleich, I think, is the company. And they make all the Smurf toys they always have. Uh, these, like, little plastic Smurf toys, of which there are so many different ones. But uh, they're not posable. These ones are. And we just by their arms and their head. And they're very cute. And this one, these ones are a little bit lighter in blue. But then the Schleich has always made their Smurfs a little too too blue, too dark of a blue, compared to the cartoon, you know. But anyway, so that two pack. There you go, Papa and basically Papa and Mama Smurf. Now let's see what mystery figure I've gotten. This is tense because the only one really worth getting is Brady. Yeah, <laughs> I got one of the girl Smurfs. This is Smurf Blossom. Brainy's probably the hardest one to get. This is Smurf Blossom, and she comes with this little, this little. Uh, 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 I guess this is like a, a little lightning bug. I'm not sure. They had little lightning bugs they carried in jars and they would shake them for light. And that looks like that's what that is, although it was not the Girl Smurfs that had that. Now, these packs, a different thing about these packs is each of them comes with a little animal character. But most of these animal characters in the film are much bigger than the Smurfs. Now, if this is the lightning bug, then this is an exception, but it should be actually way smaller than this. <laughs> the one that comes with, with um, Brainy is probably the one that's closest to a good size for for the figure. So the little animal character doesn't make much sense, but so I got one of these little girl Smurfs, so that's pretty cool. Um, Smurf, let's see, what is her name again? Smurf Blossom, okay, Smurf Blossom is the one voiced by Ellie Kemper, who I know the name, but I can't remember who that is. Um, but she was the, I guess she was the hyper one. Yeah, she was sort of the comedic Smurf that would bounce off the walls all excited. I'll probably get a few more of these packs. Try to get, try a few more times to get Brainy Smurf. Because now that I've gotten her, getting the, uh, the uh, Smurfette two pack is kind of, I'm going to end up with two of these. It's that's what happens with these mystery packs. I, I really don't like mystery packs. I could just go on eBay. Somebody will probably be smelling, uh, selling Brainy Smurf on there. But yeah, um, Smurfs and the, uh, and the Lost Village. I do uh, recommend going to see it if you like the Smurfs a lot. If you don't like the Smurfs a lot or if you just like Smurfs in New York, or if you just like, uh, I don't know, if, if you're not a Smurfs person, you know it. Um, if you want to introduce your kids to the Smurfs, this is a great movie. So so go check it out. I do recommend this one. Um, you're going to get a lot of mixed reviews, I guess. But it comes down to, do you like kids' movies even if they are for younger kids sometimes? You know, It's not an edgy kids movie uh it's just a uh it's just a cute kids movie but it is the smurfs and it's very loyal to the smurfs and it has some cute little jokes here and there um gargamel and his 
his two buddies, the cat, and he's got a bird, like a vulture or some kind of bird. And they're, they, they bring a lot of the humor, but so do some of the Smurfs. So it's, I enjoyed it. That's all I'm going to say on that. And I, I, I haven't gone to see Boss Baby, and most people would have said that's the better choice of the two animated movies out right now. Um, because I've heard that it's surprisingly good. Uh, I wasn't too interested in it from the trailers, but people who weren't, like Cinema Snob, has said that it's fan it's pretty fantastic, or pretty good, anyway. <laughs> I don't know. I'll probably wait for that one, but maybe I'll see it. You never know. I don't know. I'm going out of town soon, and, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to get around to seeing that one until Netflix. Okay, guys. See ya. Damn it, Brainy, I told you your face would get stuck that way.